going on, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another segment of Cafe Talk with Pastor Glover. And as you can see, that is not me. To my right, I have my co-host. Co-host, Chris Howard. I'm sorry to cut you off, but I had to introduce myself. Oh, all right. Co-host Chris Howard. And on my left, we have <laughs> Brother Jameson here today with us. Jameson Austin. Did I say that right? Mm-hmm. All right. Cool beans. Okay, so can you tell the um, the audience about you a little bit and yeah. how you're affiliated with UCFM in a blaze? Cool. So, like she said, my name is Jameson Austin, um, minister here at the church. Um, I'm one of the teachers for Young Men of Valor. Um, I came to UCFM at 14. Um, wasn't really a church kid coming up. Mm-hmm. And uh, <clears throat> basically... Since that time, I've been discipled, trained. I went to college. Uh, now I'm back in Baton Rouge, uh, getting my doctorate in physical therapy. Yes, sir. Uh, trying to be, you know, a clinician out here. Um, but yeah, I, I have a passion for uh, ministry. Have a passion for serving, leading, teaching, and um, that's why I'm here uh, with these great people. Young goat, the young goat. Right. <laughs> So I feel like he has a lot of energy today, so we're going to give it Me? to you. <gasps> Change it from co-host to host. Just put it right there. Host. <laughs> so <laughs> first question. Mm-hmm. Jameson, you are a very experienced person for your age. You have been through a lot of things I can say from what I know about you. Can you speak on one of the first trials that you had as a, as a young teenager? And uh, how did you overcome it? And what did that teach you? Um is obviously overcoming with fear of rejection. Mm. Um, Mm. I learned that, well, let me back up. So I personally struggled all of my youth coming up trying to be accepted by people. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. I was very overweight. Um, I want to say by the time I was nine years. By the time, yeah. (laughs) We didn't even know. (laughs) um, By the time I was nine years old, I was over 200 pounds. Wow. Yeah. Um, A lot of love. Just a lot of love. You know what I'm saying? Um, (laughs) Wow. But, you know, on the flip side of that, Mm -hmm. I got picked on a lot. Got into a lot of issues with Mm -hmm. with cats and stuff like that. Um, Had anger issues. Mm -hmm. Um, Nothing that people don't know uh, wasn't. Uh, my father was not in the home mm-hmm. uh, for me coming up raised in a single parent household. Uh, my mom was my mom and dad, mm-hmm. but I'm blessed because I got a grandma, I got aunts, I got a. I'm people call me the village kid. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, <laughs> like literally, I got momos everywhere. Yeah, um, <laughs> not the momo. Yeah, I got momos <laughs> everywhere. But I did struggle with rejection, fear of rejection, mm-hmm. wow. um, and so I've always had that. Like, well, I don't have it no more, but. I've always wrestled with this, you know, wanting to be accepted by people mm. and trying to find identity wow. um, in culture. Like wow. I'm a hip hop head yeah. all day long, uh-huh. yeah. but I was trying to find identity through people who didn't have a sense of identity within mm. themselves. Yeah. And so that was my biggest struggle as a youth. Um, and then, you know, uh, coming to know the Lord. Uh, but after that, coming to be around godly people, godly men, mm-hmm. um, and then getting the revelation of Christ being my father. That's really that's really how I look at God. I really look at God as my father mm-hmm. because he filled that void and gave yeah. me that understanding of wow. who I really am in him. Yeah. And that's why I'm totally content. And mm-hmm. so one of my favorite quotes is, you know, if you live for people's accept- acceptance, you die from their rejection. Mm-hmm. And that really came for yeah. me out of that place of getting a sense of who I really am mm-hmm. in Christ. And so uh, wow. that's why I walk with that sense of purpose and understanding, you know, who I am and who, what my identity is uh, to this day. That's awesome, man. Love it. That's yeah. great. A lot of young guys out there, uh, even in the term young is so um, subjective, right? Because I can be still considered a young man. And some of my peers and people younger than me, they suffer with not knowing who they are. Like, who am I? And I can say I can pretty much relate to that. Because I suffered with knowing who I was as at a at a young age. I, I had a form of identity because of the identity my parents gave me. But when you want to be in and you, you know what I'm saying, you want to feel accepted by those that are around you, you search for it in what's popular, what's in culture, what's in hip hop, because that was my thing too. So I wanted to be like Kevin Gates and <laughs> people like that. Like yeah. that's what I want. So I found my identity in. Right. So so I can definitely 
relate to that. And I know a, a, a lot of other young men can relate to that too. Yeah, it's real. Yeah. And then the thing is like, um, hindsight is twenty twenty. Like, right. um, I just look back over my life and I'm just like, you know, if you just look from the outside looking in, you know, I, it's the only thing that separates me from another person is the grace of God. Thanks. Because like just coming out of what I came out of mm-hmm. is just like um, I could be easily, you know, a statistic, mm-hmm. easily, Thanks. you know, giving into drugs, giving yeah. into, you know, the jail system, mm-hmm. giving into um, just, you know, all of these different different things that mm-hmm. we see commonly affect young black males. Mm-hmm. Um, but just to, to see that. I can look back over my life and literally see the hand of God. Mm-hmm. Like I was just Same. thinking about the other day how I was driving and I remember I think I had beef with God that morning because mm-hmm. it was something going on that I just did not like and I mm-hmm. blamed God for mm-hmm. it. And wow. I was driving uh, and I was on my way to my friend's house and um, it was a two lane highway. So one car, one lane going this way, the other, way, other lane coming this way. Mm-hmm. A car, guy had just uh, killed somebody, literally. And he was trying to get away. Wow. Um, he tried to pass the car in front of him. Mm-hmm. He was in my lane. And uh, we were headed like a one-on-one collision wow. course. And I I kid you not, I can't make it up. My car went this way. It was a ditch right here. Yeah. But it ended up be, like I turned into a parking lot. And then his car went the same way. I knew we was going to collide somehow. Yeah. But it was like a hand was just in between my car and in between his car. And it was like we split and he went all the way around. And then he like we did not touch. Yeah. Like he went literally went all the way around. Like we turned into the same parking lot. I stopped scared out of my mind. Yeah. (laughs) He was like just on adrenaline, I guess, and just went all the way around. And then it ended up being on the news. Like Mm -hmm. this was in um, Monroe where Mm -hmm. I was living at at the time. And uh, he ended up being on the news, got arrested. Like, he had actually, like, left, like, a robbery or something like that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so, like, I mean, there's so many more stories, but Mm -hmm. I can literally look over the, you know, back over my life and see the hand of God, like, just just covering me, Mm -hmm. protecting me. Um, and just trying to, and just guiding me, you Mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, through, through my whole life. So, yeah. Yeah. But, um, another thing is, like, um, a lot of people don't understand that, um, when you, when you have this sense of fear of rejection, mm-hmm. it's like you want to to please people because you feel like that's what your purpose is is mm-hmm. to 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 please people. Mm-hmm. But if you're always living for people, mm-hmm. then when people reject you, like it kills you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And um, just like for me, it just through a revelation of experiences. Um, and then just, you know, getting in God's word, mm-hmm. um, I can't stress like the word really works yeah, facts. and it, it, it has worked in my life facts. and uh, I'm just thankful. Yeah. Like if every day, if I, if I could only say two things, mm-hmm. two words, I could say thank you all yeah. day long, every yeah. single day. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's, that's kind of like, you know, where I'm at, just gratefulness and yeah. thankfulness. Uh, for the things that he, if he never did another thing for me, yeah, he did it more than enough. Right. So. <laughs> wow. I have a question. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is kind of directed for a response, like to give to the teens, like, um, with you being in the place that you are now, um, how would you encourage teens to like stay consistent even when they are like tested and like you know, um hit with a trial like how do you how what would you say to them to keep them like motivated i feel like consistency comes with a vision mm. consistency <laughs> comes with a vision like if i know like what my goal is mm-hmm. can't nothing stop me facts mm. you know and to people who don't understand it comes off like it's arrogance mm-hmm. but it's mm-hmm. actually confidence yeah and the confidence comes from you having a surety of what your goal is mm-hmm. and a surety that you have everything that you need to accomplish that. Yeah. And then having the focus and the drive to go accomplish that thing. Mm. Like, I would have never expected to be in some of the rooms that I've been in. Mm-hmm. I would have never expected, like, for example, just quick testimony. I got invited to the White House for oh, something wow. that I did in 2019. Wow. Like, <laughs> I've been in spaces and places with people who 
I'm just like, wow, God, like, are you serious? Like, yeah. how, like, it's blowing my mind. Yeah. And so for a, a young person who wants to, you know, accomplish, you know, whatever your goals are, whatever your dream is, it starts with a focus. Mm -hmm. It starts with a vision. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And when you have a vision, you got to protect that vision. Mm -hmm. Like, Protect it from dream killers. Yeah. You know what dream killers are? People with bad attitudes. Mm. People who always say you'll never be anything. Mm -hmm. You'll never accomplish that. That mm -hmm. sounds foolish. Mm -hmm. I love <laughs> even <laughs> I love the story about the guy, um, the Raising Cane's guy. Mm. Yeah. He was a student at LSU and his professor said that you'll never go into business selling chicken fingers. Mm -hmm. This dude is I mean, he's selling more <laughs> chicken fingers than yeah. anybody else I know. Right. Colonel Sanders was a 65-year-old man. Mm -hmm. And for him to go into business selling chicken, yeah. I mean, people still buying his chicken. Right. And he's dead. Right. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Everything starts with a vision. Mm -hmm. Whatever your goals are, like for me, this worked for me. I can't tell you what works for everybody else, but I know what works for me. Whatever my vision is, I write that thing down. Whatever my goal is, I write that thing down. When I was in college, I took a sheet of paper first day. Took a sheet of paper, everything I wanted to accomplish while I was in college. I still got that paper right mm -hmm. now. Every single thing that was on that paper that was meant for me, yeah. I did it. I accomplished yes. it. Yeah. Every single t and I did it every semester. Yeah. And so wow. what I'm, and that's where the consistency come in. At. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? I hold myself accountable to my goal. I don't need nobody. See, I don't need a carrot. I don't need anybody to to wake me up because I know what I'm going after. Mm -hmm. You know, I know what my vision is. I know what my focus is. Yeah. And so to your question, for anybody who like looking to, to accomplish whatever it is, like you got to have that vision, mm -hmm. write the vision, make it plain yeah. and stay with it. Yeah. And don't let anybody or anything get in your way. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's family. I don't care if it's friends. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't even care if, if, if it's your bestest best friend because yeah. if they really your friend, like, your friend will ride or die, mm -hmm. tell you right or wrong, yeah. speak the truth in love. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. They'll be there for you to support you. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? Yeah. And uh, But if, if they if they a snake friend, what I call a <laughs> snake friend, a snake friend will be like, that ain't going to work. Or they'll be jealous. Mm -hmm. And they'll be jealous and then they'll try to steal whatever your vision is. Yeah. That's why you can't. That's why you can't tell mm -hmm. everybody, you know, what your vision is. Because yeah. everybody's not meant to hear it, mode. and everybody's not meant to speak into your mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Facts. Let me stop, though. I don't know. You just going <laughs> in. That's I, what it's for. I found uh, it to be real interesting when you said dream killers. The first thing that popped in my mind was the biggest dream killer to us all is ourselves. You know, when we get discouraged, who is really the person that's really speaking to us saying it's not going to work? It's our inner voice, and I think the best way to, to overcome that, I know I have, is through the word, through truth, through affirmation, you know, of God's word, where he speaks to us about how we're going to be successful, how he's going to make sure that we're going to be all right here, take care of every need and things like that, so I just so, want to To add comment that. on that point, you know, you made a good point, you mm -hmm. know, talking about the inner fight. Mm -hmm. I always say the enemy is in a me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Facts. Like, um... We have to learn how to win the fight within. Mm -hmm. I always talk about the civil war within. Um, when I was going through what I was going through, we'll talk about all that, you know, um, in a little bit. But I, t I had a talk with uh, Pastor Ellis, mm -hmm. and um, one of the things he talked to me about was having self talk, mm -hmm. survive. He called them survival monologues, yeah. talking to yourself. Yeah. Like you know, the world will say you crazy if you talk to yourself, yeah. but in the body of Christ, you crazy if you don't talk to yourself. Yeah. Right. right. Because like you have to tell yourself to get in line. Mm -hmm. You have to tell yourself, I can, mm -hmm. I will, I must. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to the vision. I can, I will, I must. Can't yeah. nothing get in my way. Yeah. Because I know I can. Mm -hmm. Because I know I will. Mm -hmm. Because I know I must get like one of the most powerful revelations for me. Mm -hmm. I can't speak for nobody else, but for me. One of the most powerful revelations that woke me up is that you have something in you that somebody else needs. Mm -hmm. Like somebody <laughs> is starving right now yeah. because you are not where you need to be. Mm -hmm. Somebody is suffering right now because you haven't given them the word that they need to hear. Mm -hmm. Like God wants to be able to use you, not just so you can be blessed, 
but so that other people can eat off of your tree, mm. eat yeah, the fruit that you are yeah. supposed to bear. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, mm-hmm. definitely. But it's it's a process though, mm-hmm. and so that's what wakes me up. Mm-hmm. My passion wakes me up. Mm-hmm. Uh, I love. There's a shirt. It says "No alarm clock needed." My mm-hmm. passion wakes me yeah. up, and so why <laughs> I'm so passionate about why I do what I do mm-hmm. when I speak what I speak is because I know mm-hmm. that somebody need to eat this. Mm-hmm. Somebody needs to hear this. Mm-hmm. Like it's people. Struggling with suicide, yeah, exactly. and the reason they're struggling with suicide is because no one was there to encourage them. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. God want to use you to encourage somebody. Yeah. He want to use you to bless somebody. Yeah. And so that's why <laughs> I'm so passionate yeah. because that's what God made me for to be a blessing to somebody else. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm focused on my goals. Why I'm focused on my vision because mm-hmm. I know if I accomplish my vision, now it's not about me. Yeah. It's about what God is getting glorified through me yeah. and who God is blessing through me. Mm. But I ain't trying to preach though. But yeah. <laughs> you said that you were going, if you could just quickly speak on what you said, the things that you went through. Because you said you, you were going to speak on that. So I want to hear that. Yeah. So, um, I graduated <laughs> from ULM in 2016. Mm. I could have graduated in 2015 because I graduated early. Um, but I decided to pursue medical school, get MD. Mm-hmm. And... Um, so I stayed behind another semester, and then I got into the master's program so I could finish my prereqs and stuff. Mm-hmm. During that time, it was just like super hard, mm. like everything, like just it was just a tough time. And then I got rejected. Mm. The first, like I'm applying to medical school, took the MCAT rejection. Wow. I'm thinking, God, you set this up like I'm supposed to go into yeah. medical school. Like, God, like, I'm mad. Yeah. And then I'm wow. like, you know what? All right, just try again. Took the MCAT again. All right, applied again. Rejected again. Wow. I got like six or seven rejection letters. Dang. Yeah, that's a lot of money, too. Right. That's, <laughs> that's like and you can, a thing. Well, with yeah. physical therapy, how often can you apply? So, it's just like um, the same. So, um. the system is very similar. So, mm. If you're going in MD, you're going to go through AMCAS. Mm-hmm. If you're going to go through physical therapy, you're going to go through PTCAS. Mm-hmm. Similar system. Now, I had already applied to PT school okay. as like a backup that gotcha. first year. Yeah. But <clears throat> this is like my divine moment, like where God like really gave me true revelation about where I need to be at. Yeah. And so uh, I, like I said, I had already applied to PT school. I already got accepted mm-hmm. and I was on my way to the school. And um, God told me don't go. Wow. And so I never told nobody. I never told nobody. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Exclusive. But yeah, I never told nobody. But uh, I'm on my way. Like, I got a scripture. I got confirmation, everything. Yeah. Like, don't worry about it. Like, I need you to stay back. Yeah. And uh, I'm on my way to Shreveport on I-20. And 18 wheeler crashes. The whole highway is shut down. Oh, dang. Whole highway is shut down. This is after you already heard him say, don't go. Right. Uh, I'm that, still trying look, to there go. You go. That, there you go. There it is. I'm still <laughs> trying to go. And um, so, highway is shut down. Tears is coming down my eyes. I'm like, God, like, why? Like, yeah. I can't be broke. Like, yeah. I'm not, like, I'm not going to, yeah. I don't see how this mm. is going to happen. Like, I ain't got no place to live. Wow. Wow. I ain't got nothing. Like, you know what I'm saying? How is this going to work out? But. So, like, my backup plan was to apply for the graduate program mm-hmm. and get a grad assistantship. Yeah. Tell me why, as soon as I turned the car around, I got the acceptance letter for <laughs> graduate school. I got the acceptance letter for the grad assistantship. Yeah. And I had already got an apartment. Wow. So, um, I just couldn't do nothing wow. but cry. Wow. I just couldn't do nothing but cry. But... And, wow. and but here's Hallelujah. what God said in that moment. Yeah. And this is what I really like want on, on a shirt or something. God said, Don't worry, you'll thank me later. <laughs> he said, Don't worry, Facts. you'll thank me later. Facts. And so Hallelujah. like for me, yeah. I come feel on. like, you know, Jesus. No matter what I'm going through right mm. now, the best is yet to come. Facts. Come it on. It didn't matter how many rejection letters yeah. that I got from medical school. Yeah. Like I realized that at that particular point in my life, God had an assignment yeah. for me to be yeah. and to do. Yeah. And he still has me on assignment. Mm-hmm. So I can't compare myself mm-hmm. to anybody else. Yeah. I can't compare Come myself on. to what he's doing Come or what on. she's doing or where they are in Come their on. life. I yeah. know that I'm following the path that Jesus Christ has for me. Yeah. And that's what gives me contentment mm-hmm. every single day. Yeah. And like Hallelujah. Pastor Ellis, you know, 
he does he he teaches so well like there's no other place the safest place to be in is in the will of god thanks the best the most prosperous place mm-hmm. to be in is in the will of god mm-hmm. and that has been my experience this whole time since 2016. Yeah. And so I know that there is still more to come. Mm-hmm. But for where I am right now, I'm trusting Jesus. Thanks. Wow. That's it. Man, y'all take that, pick that up, take that for to the real? store. Wow. Don't worry, you'll thank me later. Hey, that's real. Mm-hmm. For and real. I feel like that was like needed for me. Um, just because like I'm I wouldn't say I'm in a time of unrest, but I'm in a time of uncertainty. And it's not out of fear, but it's just preparation because, like, I'm about to graduate. So, it's like, I know, like, my life about to shift. I'm trying to get into LSU for my master's, you know. And so, it's just, like, I have a lot going on. And I'm really depending on getting accepted there. Like, I don't know. I don't know if what my backup plan will be, you know. And so, I'm just really having faith, like, that I'm going to get it. You know, why not? Like, you know, I'm trying to be obedient and stuff. And so, I think that even when I do become fearful or doubtful at times, it's like, he sees so much further ahead Thanks. than me. So Thanks. when am I work? Has he disappointed me yet? No. Right. I've been surprised, not right. disappointed though. Right. And so yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. yeah. Facts. So I, that's good. <laughs> I love it. So to move on to other endeavors, because you are a very busy, very, very capable man. Um, we heard that you have a book, right? Yeah. So we want we want to get into that. Just give us a. Do you got it on you? Yeah. Are you strapped? Yeah. Bam. So, Do a gunshot. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, Walking with God, mm-hmm. 91 Days on Your Christian Journey. It's my first uh, release. Um, this is exclusive. It hasn't released yet. Mm-hmm. But by the time this video comes out, it should uh, be God. released. Um, so, uh, the backstory behind all of this mm-hmm. is... Um, I used to um, send out scriptures to people every mm-hmm. single day. God had blessed me. You know, I was reaching up to 1,200 people every single day with scriptures and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, I, this was actually birthed out of a revelation. I needed to put something in people's hands mm-hmm. so that people could be discipled, mm-hmm. right, without necessarily having me to, to send it out to everybody. Yeah. But also, on a deeper level, mm-hmm. behind the backstory behind this is it came out of a revelation. Um, I was asked to, to share the word at my grandmother's church Mm -hmm. and God just downloaded like, Mm -hmm. you know, this theme of walking with God. Yeah. And so another book that will be coming out is actually the narrative or the theological concept of Mm -hmm. what does it mean to walk with God. Yeah. This devotional is a training material for a new Christian Mm -hmm. or a young Christian, like a young teenager. Mm -hmm. So that's why I brought it out. Yeah. Because this is an exclusive um this is I don't want to say it's exclusively to young teenagers or new coming believers, mm-hmm. but it was built or it was designed with the young believer in mind. Mm-hmm. Someone who's transitioning right. from high school to college, mm-hmm. someone who's transitioning out of college into the workforce, mm-hmm. something like that, um, or a new believer who's just starting out on your journey and yeah. you need a solid, like, you know, solid dose of the word yeah. in you yeah. on a daily and consistent yeah. basis. Fact. And so the first. 91 days Mm -hmm. in a person's life is so transformative. Mm -hmm. It takes 21 days to build a habit, right? Mm -hmm. But it takes 90 days to build build a life. Mm -hmm. And so that's why this uh, (laughs) book was developed with the theme of, I want to put something in your hands the first 91 days of your Christian transformation Mm -hmm. to to build you and set you up to go where God has for you for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of like the backstory of the book. Um, A lot of work went into Mm -hmm. it. Uh, it's 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 I a um, it's a lot of this is truly you know um I really I'm really glad to to finally get this out mm-hmm. and put this in people's hands because yeah. I really believe that this is um by the Lord it's mm-hmm. not by me yeah um I really believe that this is something that people need especially you know with all of this different stuff that's going on mm-hmm. right now a lot of people are hurting a lot mm-hmm. of people have questions a lot of people are like mm-hmm. in limbo mm-hmm. and they need a sense of purpose they need a sense of direction. Mm-hmm. And what better to put in people's hands to let them know that they are are right where they need to be Mm -hmm. and that the Lord Jesus himself is going to walk them through this journey. So it's called walking with God. And that's the direction, that's purpose for what he has for us. Mm. Let me say this. Uh, As you were speaking, 
it just came to me. <clears throat> and I've really been meditating on this for like a, a few a few weeks now. Mm-hmm. I read the Bible and we read about these stories about people that actually lived, right? Mm-hmm. They were here on the earth at one point and they impacted the world, their people. They believed God. They followed what God wanted them to do in such a way that now we're able to read about their stories and get inspiration from them. In each age, each time, each generation, God raises up people mm-hmm. in order to lead inside that particular time area. Mm-hmm. Uh, continue doing what you're doing. God is leading you in a in a magnificent way, and I'm not just saying it just to just to flatter you. Not not too many, and, and this is because God is a God of um, of realness, right? Mm-hmm. He understands the way the world works. He understands that there are uh, um, inefficiencies inside the world where where some people get more than others do. There's inequality. That's where I was looking for. Mm. I said inefficiency. Yeah. Business. I don't know. I'm tripping. But there are inequalities. And there are not a lot of black authors that are writing inside the Christian uh, genre and bringing the word in, in that type of way, especially on a worldwide scale. Mm. You don't know where God is leading you. But you have a passion and you have the mind for it. So I pray that that God does everything that he's trying to do for you, right? And that you impact the world in a significant way. I really do. I, I really appreciate do. it. I appreciate it. You know, um, I appreciate that. I just, if I could encourage a young person right now, mm-hmm. I would say be an ambassador, not a spy. Mm. And what I mean by that is a spy doesn't want them to know, doesn't want people to know who they are or what they represent. Mm. But the whole goal of an ambassador is to make the place where you're at like the place where you're from. Mm. So the Bible says we're ambassadors for Jesus Christ. Mm. Don't be ashamed of who God made you to be. Don't be ashamed of the calling that he has on your life. Mm. You know, if he put a calling on your life, embrace that calling, Mm -hmm. right? Don't be arrogant, but embrace that calling, Mm -hmm. right? Embrace your calling and walk in it and let your light shine. Like, a lot of times, Christians get caught up in talking about the light mm-hmm. instead of being the light. Mm, yeah. We're supposed to be the light. Yeah. Be the light, be an ambassador, and let God get glory from your life. Yeah. And uh, that's just like my primary encouragement. Find your identity, find your contentment in Him. Because mm-hmm. if you find your contentment or identity in anything else, it's only temporary and it's going to perish. Mm-hmm. And when that thing Hallelujah. perishes, facts, facts. how is it going to deliver you? Yeah. But we serve the true and living God. Facts. And he's not going to perish. And he's always going to be there to deliver you and yeah. lead you. And then he loves you Facts. with everlasting love. And I that has you. what? That that piece right there, mm-hmm. the love piece, mm-hmm. is just what keeps me going. Because, like I said, I didn't have a lot of things that a lot of these kids have, mm-hmm. you know, with support and mm-hmm. things of that nature. Um, but the the contentment and the satisfaction I get in knowing that my father loves me... Mm-hmm. And he's with me. Mm-hmm. I I walk through a wall for that. Yeah. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> I walk through a wall for that. And I'm just like I say, eternally grateful. Oh, so y'all asked me, mm-hmm. or oh, y'all was talking about like you know, y'all didn't believe that I was uh, overweight when I was yeah uh, when I was when I was young. Um, but yeah, I'm real passionate in the fitness mm-hmm. now. I know. I'm super and I, that makes sense now. Right. It makes so much more sense, yeah. I thought yeah. it was because of the physical therapy thing, but yeah. it's deeper than it's that. Deeper than that. Yeah, yeah, that actually led to the physical yeah, therapy wow. thing. So I was overweight, started playing sports, and I tore my ACL mm. in my junior year, went through physical therapy. That's how the whole thought of becoming a physical therapist mm. came into play. Mm-hmm. And then just like I could have played football. Um, at the next level, but I just kept getting hurt. Mm-hmm. And so I just said, instead of being a broken athlete, yeah. I'm going to fix broken athletes. <laughs> and that's kind of like, that's smart. And, in yeah. that, and in that process, I developed this love and this passion for fitness mm-hmm. and, and, um, and performance. Mm-hmm. And so like, like I really, I really go out when it comes to like working out and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Um, it's just like a, I want to say it's therapeutic for mm-hmm. me. Um, and so, like, like I really get in my zone when it comes to, like, fitness and stuff. Yeah. That's kind of, like, my zone. Yeah. Nice. So, um, I say to young people when they come to college, get something that you love to do and be active. Mm-hmm. Like, please be active. Yeah, please. You know, uh, like, everybody's talking uh, about COVID-19 <laughs> and this a pandemic. 
but we're in a pandemic in a pandemic mm-hmm. with you know obesity and mm-hmm. things like that so whatever you find yourself walk you know what I'm saying find something if you work out work mm-hmm. out you know if you play basketball play basketball but find something active that you love to do and stick with it mm-hmm. it'll do it'll, it'll bless your life tremendously mm-hmm. wow. um, so that's the workout piece thank you cool beans thank you you had anything else to say no I just was about to thank you for this thank film. you it was a lot of nuggets for Thanks. y'all to watch um I felt encouraged and it's just awesome to see um I just I don't know it's like I enjoy seeing black men get Same. like praised for like doing the right thing Same. you know and it's just especially young so mm-hmm. like this is just motivational um hopefully somebody sees this and can be encouraged um to just go for it yeah and so um Thank you again. Thank you. This is really good. And thank y'all again for joining us on another segment of Cafe Talk with Pastor Glover. Yes. Until next time. Next time? You said next time? Next time. Next time ain't going to be next time. You want to know why? Why? Because it's something new. Get ready because it's going to be wild. It's going to be amazing. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be blazing.